A blessed day to all and welcome to Renown 2020. I am Pastor Marvin Adolfo and I would like to thank God for uh, raising me through CBF, discipling me through CBF and molding me as a person, equipping me for the ministry through the CBF ministry. I can, uh, I can declare, I can proclaim, I can you know, testify that indeed through CBF, I was so blessed. And through CBF, I was, I am uh, now uh, in the ministry. I am serving the Lord, uh, doing discipleship in the workplace and doing missions because of the influence of Campus Bible Fellowship in my life. So uh, praise God for all the peoples, for all the individuals that God used uh, through uh, Nong Philip and the staff and others, my friends in CBF. Thank you for your lives. That has been an instrument. And also, I thank God for his grace today that he allowed me to speak on behalf of, uh, you know, uh, many CBFers. I praise God for this uh, Renown 2020 that uh, until now we can still continue the ministry of the Lord through Renown. Uh, and welcome again uh, uh, to this uh, preaching time. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be talking about work and study in light of eternity. So for me personally, I've been working uh, since 2008 as a corporate chaplain. So I, I'm pastoring different companies. So that's my work assignment. And I'm helping our church, House of Prayer, uh, Makati and Alabang here in Manila. And also, uh, praise God for the opportunity to serve him through missions, engagement, enriching the unriched people group. So let me uh, share some uh, simple and short background. So again, I'm married. And I'm, I married uh, Michelle uh, Ann Crispo. So is, she's also part of CBF in Palawan before. And we meet here in, the, in Manila and uh, through small group. And... Uh, Again, uh, praise God for his uh, amazing grace that uh, he gave us uh, two uh, children. Uh, I have uh, one uh, son, okay, Jonathan Edward, and one daughter, Kayla Esther. So now I'm still serving uh, here in Manila, uh, working in different uh, workplaces at the same time, studying at uh, Singapore Bible College with my uh, doctor in ministry. So that's a uh, uh, what I've been busy in the past days right now. So uh, I think uh, I'm excited uh, and I'm privileged to share to you about work and study in light of eternity. Now, let me start. Most people are spending more than half of their life at work. That is an average of 50 years in the workplace. And most of us also spent one-third, at least one-third of our life at school studying. That is an average of 15 to 20 years at school. So when you combine studying and working, it means most of our life revolves around those two main activities, going to school to study and going to workplace to work. Moreover, for many of us, work and study doesn't matter. Nevertheless, in men, in, it matters for eternity because God has a purpose and a goal for why we work and study. How are you with your work and schooling? Some workers and students do not find meaning in purpose in what they're doing. Some find it boring in the workplace or in school. Others feel that workplace or their work is a daily burden by thinking that it is an unnecessary evil due to the curse of sin when Adam and Eve sin against God. Others are not enjoying their work assignment. Some Christians, some even Christian believers, are struggling between their work and their ministry. And others, I believe, some are planning to resign from work, from their work. And they want to join the full-time ministry. Many Christians are being divided between their work because they think that it's they're, they're secular and they're sacred. So there's a divide between sacred and secular work. 
some people see that doing business or working in the corporate world is secular and doing the ministry in the church or campus ministry is sacred. Now, let me tell you our view of our work or study will affect our attitude towards our work and study. My friends, what is your attitude toward your work and study? Are you struggling right now and just surviving? Are you or are you enjoying your work? What is your, your feeling right now with your work and study? Are you still motivated? Are you still excited? My prayer for everyone today, who, those who are watching and listening to this message, that God will help you see your work as how God sees it in light of eternity. May God give you the right mindset and right heart towards your work and study assignment. Now, let me share with you the story of Brother Lawrence, who struggled this work, in his work assignment. Around 1608, a man named Nicholas Herman was born in France. He became a Christian at the age of 18. And in his 20s, he decided that he wanted to, to commit his life to God more fully. So he entered the, the, a monastery where he was given the name Brother Lawrence. Now, he imagined that by, give, by living in a monastery, he would spend all his time at the chapel praying and worshiping God. However, he found himself assigned in the kitchen duties. Washing dishes, preparing food, cooking food, you know, serving those who are in the chapel. For 10 years, he struggled with his work assignment and he hated being in the kitchen while others while at the chapel. So he resented being given such meaningless work that's for him. So if you are a friend of Brother Lawrence, probably you met him during that time for 10 years, how will you advise him? What will you counsel him concerning his struggle with his work or with his work assignment that he hated for 10 years? Probably is about to resign. Do you think Brother Lawrence worked in the kitchen was less important than the work of the monk serving in the chapel. Again, our view in belief towards our work will affect our attitude in our work. Let me share some defective views on our work. These are the wrong, in, wrong mindset towards work. When you see work that it doesn't matter to God, it becomes a daily burden. When you believe that work as a result of curse to man's sense of to be obedient, disobedient, it becomes an unnecessary evil. When you view your work, that when you view that work inside the church or inside the ministry as sacred, and when you view your work outside the church as secular, then you will always struggle to do work for God. And I think that's what happened with Brother Lawrence. Now, what are the biblical truths about work and study? Let us go back to God's original design and purpose concerning the topic of work. And let us learn from the scripture the biblical truth about work that will transform our wrong attitude towards our work. Now, in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, it talks about the beginning, the creation of God. And work started even at the beginning, at the start of the creation of God. And in the, 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 that's the first chapter of the, uh, the first uh, book of the Bible. And if you would go, okay, uh, to Revelation 21 to 22, the last chapter of the book of Revelation, which is the last chapter of the Bible as well, it talks about worship for eternity. So it ended in the garden, and it, in, uh, it started in the garden in, uh, through work, okay? And it ended in the city uh, through uh, worshiping God for 
eternity. So the story of God in his creation started in the garden and it ended in the city. It is a story about human flourishing. God created human beings to flourish. We are his workmanship created for good works even before the foundation of the world according to Ephesians 2.10. God's story about human beings started with God's calling for his first creation to worship him through work in the Garden of Eden. And the story will culminate in the worship of God for eternity in the city, in the new city of Jerusalem. Let me read with you Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. To 15. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he has done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Verse 4, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Verse 5, when no bush of the field was yet in the land and no small plant of the field that yet sprung up for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land and there was, <clears throat> because there was no man to work the ground. And verse 15, okay, let me just uh, jump to verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. Let us pray. Father God, I pray that you will bless us today with your word as we discuss and study your word, Lord. As I speak your word, may all of us will uh, worship you and bless you and glorify your name. This is pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So again, no? <clears throat> let me share this very important message for all of us this in this uh, uh, time. Remember that God created and called us to work, study, and to worship him for the rest of eternity. What are the biblical truths about work or study that will change our attitude towards our work assignment? Who is our biblical model for work? Now, let me share you this important truth. Our biblical model for work or our biblical model of work is God himself. Our biblical model of work is God himself. God himself is a model as a worker. He is our model of working with quality and excellence. In, in Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 and 2, we can observe in this in these uh, two verses how God worked. How God is a model of work. So the whole creation of God speaks about this excellence and quality of work. If you will go back to chapter 1, day 1, he created all these things and he said, okay, it was day 1 and it was good. Day 2, it was good. Day 3, it was good. Day 4, it was good. Day 5 and day 6. When he created man, he said, it was very, very good. So when God works, it is an excellent work. Because he's our model. is an excellent worker. Now we learn in verse 1 also that God created the whole universe. And he completed it, it, his work in just six days. You know, God has a plan. He planned day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4, day 5. He will complete his work at day 6. Because in day 7, he rested. Okay? You plan. Now when you work, you need to plan. Start the day. Plan it out. I want to finish all my work assignment, my job description before the end of the day or before the end of the week so that you can have time, quality time. And God made it special the seventh day because it's a day of rest. For us, the special day is Sunday, right? So 
Sunday is a day to be with the Lord, to be with our family. God is our model. He himself is a quality, excellent worker. Jesus is our model as well. Jesus the carpenter. You know, if you will study the life of Jesus, you will discover that he spent more than half of his life at work. He entered the ministry at the age of 30. 30 below or from the age of 1 to 30, or he was with his family, with his father. What did he do most of his life? He worked. He worked as a carpenter. He's our model He's our model of working with you with humility and obedience. Why humility? You know, is the is the king, is the ruler of the universe, is the most powerful person, but he came down on earth as a man and he committed himself to a work of a carpenter. That's humility. No? He did not choose, you know, the, the highest position in the society was able to lower down himself as a carpenter, an obscure kind of work, a very humbling kind of work. It was very hard kind of work to do carpentry during their time. And according to Luke 2, uh, 51, he was obedient to his father because in their culture, what it, whatever, the, the, whatever the, the trade or the job or the work of your father, he will do the same. He was so obedient. He followed. He did not choose his work. I don't know. He did not say, okay, I want to be a doctor. I want to be, you know, a lawyer. No, he did not do that. Whatever his parent, whatever the culture dictate, whatever the, 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 the expectation from him, you know, as a human being during this time, during the, that time, he obeyed that. He followed that. He was committed, obedient to his work. And to the instruction of his father following the culture that they have. Jesus worked in obscurity. And he was in full obedience to his earthly father as the son of the carpenter. According to Mark 6, 1 to 3. The third model that just God himself, the father, Jesus Christ, the carpenter, even the Holy Spirit himself as the helper. In John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit is always working as our main helper in teacher. He works to empower us as we live out our faith as witnesses of Jesus. The Holy Spirit transforms us to bear His fruit in our lives, according to Acts 1, 1, 8, and according to Galatians 5, 20, 5, 22, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. He is working in our lives day to day, 24-7, and God promised that he who began a good work in us will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1.6. God is our model worker. He is working 24-7 from the beginning until today. Now, how important is our work in study according to God's design? Second point. God created us to work and to cultivate for flourishing. God created us to work and to cultivate for flourishing according to Genesis 4, 3 to 14. Let me just read that verse in verse 4. In verse 5, Then when no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no, ma <clears throat> no small plant of the field that yet sprung up for the Lord, God had not caused it to rain on the land. Why? Because the reason is there was no man to work in the ground. There was no man to cultivate. And in verse 6, you know, in verse 6, in verse 7, if you read that, then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living creature. God created you and me to work, to cultivate in order to flourish. Work, okay? Again, God, you know, I like, I like, if you will observe chapter 2, verses 
4, 5, 6, until 14, you will observe that God prepared everything we needed to work for our work. No, he, he prepared everything, the garden. No, he planted a garden for the men to work. So he planted the garden and he put the man inside it. So God prepared everything we needed for our work. He provided all resources. He provided all opportunities, the skills, the knowledge, the talents for you and me to work so that we can cultivate and so that we can flourish. Work is a God-given place for us to flourish. He, the word there, he planted the man. Okay? I like that, that the Hebrew word. He planted the man so that the man that he planted will flourish. And another Hebrew there, he planted that man in the garden. He, in, he, he, he wants the, the man to stay so that the man can flourish. He wanted the man to work it, to cultivate it, and keep it. God intentionally put Adam in the garden and he commanded him to keep it, cultivate it, and be productive. The vision of flourishing is God's original design of, for human being through his God-given assignment. Man should embrace his God-given vision of bearing fruit, of flourishing in the workplace. Are you flourishing? Is your work flourishing? Work is about stewardship. The word, the, the Hebrew word that, uh, that he used there is keep it, guard it, protect it. It's a, it's a, it's a term for stewardship. Stewardship, be a steward of your work. The key to flourishing at work, you want to flourish, is faithfulness, loyalty, stay word to our work assignment. God has given us knowledge, talents, abilities, resources, skills, wisdom in order to flourish in our God-given work. Are you flourishing? Are you bearing fruits in your work? Work is a calling from God. Let us remind ourselves that he gives individual in individual in different work assignment. What what job or what work did God give to Adam? Ah, he was a gardener. How about what job did God uh, did God give to Noah? Ah, he was a, a carpenter. Okay. How about Joseph, the dreamer? He's good in interpreting uh, dreams. And why from a slave uh, to a jail guard? To a, gover a governor of Egypt. How about Daniel? What did job God did God give to? The How about Gideon, the, sol the soldier? How about Moses, the shepherd? How about David, from a shepherd boy to the king? Adam was a gardener. J Jesus was a carpenter, uh, more than half of his life before he started his teaching ministry. Apostle Paul was a tent making tent making businessman with Priscilla and Aquila. Do you think God would have preferred if these people had led a church or preached sermons instead of doing the work he had given to them? Do you think God considered these people lower or less important than the priests or the Levites? For example, Moses. For example, Aaron's work. Your work matters to God, brothers and sisters. He created us to work, to study, to cultivate in order for us to flourish. Now, what is the main purpose of work? Why we work? Third point. God called us to work, to study, in order to worship God. God called us to work, to study, and to worship God. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to work. Now, let me explain the word work. The work is also our worship to God. The Hebrew word that was used in the, the word work there is abuda. Okay, can you say that word? Remember this Hebrew word abuda, abuda, abuda. The Hebrew word abuda is the same root word of, for worship. In Exodus 8, chapter 8, verse 1, the Hebrew word abuda can be translated as worship. And in the sixth day, you work, and on the uh, Seventh day, you worship, okay? Exodus 30, 34, 21, it is translated to work. So the same root word was used here in Genesis chapter uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 15. The root word 
came from the uh, Hebrew word, uh, root word abad, okay, or uh, where we get the word abuda, which means to work and to worship. Work, worship. Worship, work. In the Hebrew mindset, there's no, you know, for them, there's no divide between secular and sacred because for them, their work is their extension of their worship to God. All works matters to God. The Hebrew people in the Old Testament don't have the division mindset because uh, between sacred and secular because for them, all work assignment matters to God. They believe that in God's eye, all work, all work are important. Whether you're a priest or a pastor or a businessman or a farmer or a teacher, no matter no matter what work you have, no matter you're working in, in the temple or in the garden or in the field, it all matters to God. Because work is our worship. Abuda. Work can be a place to worship God. God placed Adam in the garden not just to work and cultivate, but to worship God. Before, there's no temple. So where did they worship? In the place of work. In the garden. In the garden of our work. Work is a blessing from God and not a burden. Okay? God put Adam in the garden to work. God put Adam in the garden to uh, to work. In, to work it. Okay? God gave us work. Our work assignment, no matter how menial or small it is, it is a, in man's perspective, it is a God-given gift from God. Work is a blessing, not a burden, because it was given even before the fall of man. It's not the product of the curse of sin. Work happened before Genesis chapter 3. Okay? The fall of man happens in Genesis 3, right? Work was given in Genesis chapter 2. So there's work already before the fall, of, the fall of men. Work is an opportunity to serve God and serve others. Work as the same root word again here is, it came from the root word abad. Okay? So abuda. It means work, worship, service. Serve, work, worship. In the Hebrew culture, work is an extension of their worship and service to God. They have the worldview and a lifestyle of serving and worshiping God through their work. Whether they're working in the farm or in the, in the battlefield or inside the temple. Now, how can we apply this biblical truths and model in our work and study? Now, let me share with you some biblical and best practices at work. Number one, work and study out of love for God and others. Work and study out of love for God and others. Second, work and study with integrity by doing what is right at all times, at all places. Third, work and study with excellence to please the Lord our Master and not just to please men. Fourth, work and study intentionally to impact lives in the workplace. We are blessed to be a blessing to others at work. Matthew 5.16. Work and study to serve others with humility like Jesus. Matthew 20, verse 20. Be like Jesus. He emptied himself to serve others. Work and study to worship God, believing that it's your calling. You're created as his workmanship to do good works. And last, work and study with a balanced life by giving time to everything. Your rule and responsibility that you have balanced your work life. Now, what will you do starting today to maximize your work and study to worship God and serve others? Let us go back to the study, to the story of Brother Lawrence. Again, Brother Lawrence, for 10 years, he hated his work assignment in the kitchen for 10 years. Why? Because he has a wrong mindset about his work. But after 10 years, Brother Lawrence realized he could serve and worship God no matter where he was. He remained in the kitchen. He did not resign, praise God. And now he felt that he was so near in God's presence that uh, there is as if he were worshiping inside the chapel, though he was in the kitchen, serving, cooking, preparing meals. And furthermore, he wrote a book, a small book entitled The Practice of the Presence of God, 
In his book, he gives practical ways to work, how to work before the presence of God as a way of worshiping him through our work, whether you are in a kitchen, in a school, in the farm, in the field, in the sea, in the land, in the sky. If you want to a free copy of this book, just message me and I will send you a free copy. The Bible shows us that God is much concerned, is, is more concerned with how we do things than what it is we do. As long as what we're doing as a way to worship and to glorify God, anything we, we do at work or at school, we can use it to bring glory to God. So therefore, let us look up to God as our creator, our model as an excellent worker. Let us embrace our work as our purpose in life. Let us commit ourselves to our God-given calling to work and to worship for the rest of our life and for eternity. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whether therefore you eat or whatsoever you do, do all to, to the glory of God. God bless everyone. Enjoy God and worship Him through your work. God bless.